So today's Montreal Canadian Sports File podcast will talk about uh, what, who I consider probably the most consistent number four uh, on the defensive core for the Montreal Canadiens in the 19, late 60s and uh, into the 1970s. Of course, it's that steady defenseman Pierre Emel Bouchard. Now, Pierre uh, was born February 28, 1948, in that beautiful Quebec community of Longueuil. Some nice people over there. I've known some journalists and athletes from there. It comes from a great area. Very uh, jovial, very uh, sympathetic, as we say in uh, French. Uh, he played uh, in the NHL for not only Montreal, but the Washington Capitals. And he was a first-round pick of uh, the Montreal in a 1965 amateur draft. Went fifth uh, overall. Now, he came to prominence with the, uh, the Montreal National Major Midgets, and he also played for the unofficial second farm team of the Montreal Canadiens, the Montreal Junior Canadiens in 66-67 and 67-68. After a year of seasoning with uh, the Montreal affiliate in the AHL, uh, the Cleveland Barons, and then another year when Cleveland moved to Montreal, uh, he was showing uh, very, very consistent numbers. Now, the majority of his seasons with Montreal, he played between 1969-70 and 1977-78, winning uh, several uh, cups in the process. Um, uh, Five cups uh, in such a short career because he only uh, only ended up outside of Montreal due to some unfortunate machinations, but we're going to get into this uh, very soon. Now, uh, Bouchard played an important role along with uh, the very underrated Bill Nyrop as uh, the two key uh, steady defensive defensemen in aid of Robinson, Savard, and Lapointe, who, uh, as the triplets, or uh, the big three, dominated the NHL blue line in the 1970s and the all-star rankings as well. Uh, Bouchard's NHL career began after the Habs uh, missed the playoffs in 69-70, and, uh, which became unacceptable as a franchise. Now, because he was the son of uh, Butch Bouchard, a great uh, Montreal Canadian player of an area previous, they decided to bring not only Bouchard up, but Guy Lapointe up from the minors. Now, in his rookie year of 1971, he was part of the Habs team that defeated uh, the, uh, the heavily favored Boston Bruins in the quarterfinal round. And uh, five Stanley Cups in eight seasons, boys, you can't, uh, you can't argue with that. He, he meant a lot to Montreal. Now, Bouchard's style could be basically uh, sort of like a Rick Green. He would drop the gloves every once in a while. Unfortunately, the fight he's probably most remembered for when Stan, Stan Johnson gave him a partial concussion and knocked him out in a, in a road fight against the Bruins in the late 1970s. Now, what happened with Bouchard in the weird uh, turn of fate, prior to the 78-79 season, a failed manipulation of the waiver system by the Canadians led Bouchard's rights to unintentionally move from Montreal to Washington. Now, Montreal had intended to reclaim him, but NHL President John Siegler interfered in the deal. Initially unhappy with the move, play, Bouchard played only one game in the 78-79 season and considered retirement. However, he returned next season the NHL with Washington when he's finished a career playing uh, four seasons. Now, um, his time with Washington was an interesting transition for the team because uh, it seemed to stabilize Washington's uh, defense uh, quite a bit in those early years. And although he played the uh, majority of his last season with the Hershey Bears in the AHL, his dedication uh, to every team he played for. See, ladies and gentlemen, the, this is a player that never had more than 18 points in a season in any NHL or uh, uh, post Cleveland Bears AHL uh, season. Uh, anytime he scored a big goal, it was noticed, especially in the 75-76 season, where his two, two key, key goals uh, helped defeat the Flyers in the uh, the final round. We still remember Bouchard and Chatra not to be uh, to be negative, but anytime he scored a goal, it uh, had to be very big. Now, I mentioned before that Emil Bouchard, the Canadian Hall of Fame defenseman of the 40s and 50s, uh, was a big influence not only on the, the Habs but on his son's career. But ironically, from 1970 to 75, Pierre was on the same team as Henri Richard, creating an unusual occurrence of a player having been teammates with both 
father and son in the NHL. And Richard had played with Butch in Butch's last season, 75-76. Now, uh, upon retirement, he went into business and broadcasting. Still remains a uh, very popular uh, uh, francophone analyst. Sort of like uh, taking up the mantle of Jules Tremblay and uh, not taking, not being as egotistical as Mario Trombley, but, uh, and he sometimes, you know, sometimes he's called Butch too. It's kind of weird uh, where the father's nickname passes on to the son. Maybe only Terry Francona has that, but uh, but all I know is that uh, when Lapointe and Bouchard came up to the Habs, it uh, dawned a new era, and that was around the time where Guy Lafleur was in their sights, and, you know, he made the team... Uh, Quite younger, very rugged guy. There, six two two oh five. You know, he could handle himself. But he, like I said, he he dropped the gloves every once in a while. But he was basically, you know, what you see is what you get. But he was injury prone at times too. Like in seventy one and seventy three, he played less than uh, fifty five games, which is kind of the unofficial over under number. But I re I really think um, Bouchard was on on his way out in the late 70s because there was other players coming in including Rod Langway and Brian Ingram and uh, you know with the, the type of play he put in winning five cups there wasn't much uh, for, for more for him to do uh, you know because uh, in in my memory he's one of the few players who have well won five championships in less than eight seasons even a great Gale Sayers never never did that with Chicago obviously there was no uh, Super Bowl at the time when Gale was in his prime but you see where I'm coming from anyway. So ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening. Uh, give a, a like, subscribe, or a, a comment. Uh, anybody that listens to the podcast is well appreciated. Except for that idiot who posted on my Night Gallery podcast. Because I said, uh, camera obscure, obscure had Shakespearean gothic overtones. The man's a complete idiot. No person makes a comment about a person doing a podcast in a third person. And when I heard that, I stopped listening. Well, if you don't listen to something in the podcast, just stop right away. You don't have to post it. I don't really care if you listen to it or not because it's just one person's opinion. And if you liked what Pierre Bouchard did for Montreal, you appreciate his talent. Uh, you know, uh, I know a lot of media out there don't really talk about Pierre Bouchard because, you know, basically he was, not say an afterthought, but, you know, when you had LaPointe, Savard, and Robinson getting all the big points, Bouchard was on the back line. But to 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 my knowledge, Sherry, when that Matt Snasson took the number 26 uh, later on from Bouchard, that kept that tradition. You know, that's a very big number in Montreal Canadiens history, in that number 26 between Bouchard and Nassim. Anyway, that's my opinion. So on this COVID uh, uh, Wednesday, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Wednesday, we've got a lot of rain in New Brunswick. Be cool, take care, and, uh, you know, have a great day. Bye.